Welcome everyone. I'm going to share our screen and we'll launch right into things. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. All right. So welcome everybody. So um, right now we are working on behalf of Tom Ferin Bonin uh, on their data set. Thank you very much for having sent it to us to uh, Niels. And <laughs> so um, we are looking to optimize potential bookings for owners of vacation homes and properties using predictive modeling and machine learning. Uh, myself, Francesca and Peter will be your speakers here today. Um, initially, we'd like, I'd like to cover our objectives in the project here. So uh, firstly, Tram Fring Vonung asked, Vonungen, sorry, asked us to deliver uh, an inquiry calculator. Uh, we were asked to construct some, uh, a model that strongly performed and would, uh, it would be able to maximize and quantify what inquiries were made. Um, secondly, we were asked to work on creating a properties comparison tool. Um, a tool that is based on and gives good insight on what features in a home are most advantageous. Um, we were initially given eight data sets to work with uh, from inquiries, home descriptions, and priority advertising to room features, uh, prices as listed by the uh, homeowners, uh, guest ratings, pictures, and their uh, respective sizes and qualities, and site views. In going into this project, we had to make some presumptions about the information we were receiving. Uh, the first was that the average stay would be seven days. The second was that roughly three requests were required to yield a single booking, and that the average uh, inquiries that we looked to see in a prior, in a property uh, were proportionate to about 24. Uh, so uh, in our data exploration, uh, our initial hypotheses were the following: uh, that location would be a predictor of inquiries, that relevant equipment equipment would predict inquiries, that good ratings would be a positive predictor of inquiries and that the quality of pictures will be a predictor of inquiries. Um, there were 30,000 yeah, 30, Germany's uh, properties across Germany, uh, 30 regions and holiday regions, 200 subregions, and 300 postal codes, uh, counting only the first three digits. And these were mapped across here. Um, between 2019 and now, we had the corona pandemic occur, and this in turn changed the data for 2020 uh, significantly, where you can see significant drops when people had restrictions placed upon them and rises when those restrictions were lifted. And so for the purposes of our presentation, we will be sticking to the data set from 2019. And now on to Francesca. So. Thanks. And continuing with the exploratory data analysis, our next question was which regions receive the most inquiries? Thus, which regions most vac vacationers want to travel to? And for the top five, it turned out that the Baltic Sea receives the most inquiries, followed by the North Sea, Upper Bavaria, Algoi, and Mecklenburg Lake District. Then, in the next step, we compared this two this top five holiday regions with the regions where most of the properties are located. And except for the last place, these are the same regions. In conclusion, the most properties are located in the regions most vacationers want to travel to. If we are now looking for the travel time for these top five holiday regions, we can see that the focus is on the summer holidays in July, especially for the Northern Beach regions, Baltic Sea and North Sea, but we can also see that in both southern regions, Upper Bavaria and Algoi is an increase of inquiries in the winter months, December to February, March, which could be related to the possibility of visiting Christmas markets or skiing. 
Then in the second step, we looked at regions in which the highest inquiry count per property was achieved. And as we can see, that are not the same regions we saw before. The highest inquiry count per property received the region Saxon, Switzerland, followed by Spree Forest, Lake Constance, Thuringia Forest, and Harz Mountains. In conclusion, these regions have a lower number of properties, but still a good inquiry count and attract strong interest. They may be worth further analysis and could be regions of potential growth for Traumfernwohnung. If you are looking for the travel time in these regions, we can see that only the region Lake Constance has a typical peak in the summer. The other regions, Saxon Switzerland, Spree Forest, Thuringia Forest, and Harz Mountains, shows more activity in autumn and in winter, maybe because of good hiking and or skiing conditions. Then in the data for the prices, we had both price per day and prices per week. If one of these price values was missing, we filled it up with a multiplication or division by seven. This can be seen in the straight line in the middle. The data points above the straight line um, show the most of the home homeowners give a discount when guests book the property for a week than when booking single days. And overall, the mean price per day was 90 euros and the mean price per week was 630 euros. Then um, in the data set of the pictures, we focused on the quality of um, these since good pictures in the expose are more likely to lead um, to clicking on the house and those increased booking inquiries than if there are no or bad quality pictures. The analysis showed that all properties have photos in the expose and 98% of these photos are of high or ultra high quality. So everyone now has a good camera even on their smartphones and that's the reason why we did not include the pictures as a feature in our models. And then the exploration of the ratings showed us that 70% of the houses have a rating and that the average rating is 4.7 stars. So it seems that either all properties are of good quality and cost benefit ratio, or that only satisfied vacationers leave a rating. Because of this unknown bias, we decided not to include the rating as a feature in our models either. So after we did our initial analyses of the data, we turned to developing models and tools um, as Traumfeli and Wohnungen had asked us to do. And just a couple points about sort of how we approached this. Um, we ended up uh, working on 2019 alone as the curve you saw before uh, indicates the impact of Corona looked very different than 2019. We actually did some initial analysis on this and the models didn't do a very good job of performing uh, well on the entire set of data. So we decided to run in 2019 on the assumption that it was more or less a normal year. Um, we had some other thoughts that we had in mind when we thought about models that we were going to develop. We decided to work uh, on the metric of root mean square error as a way of understanding how good the models were and the sort of a technical term, but it's basically a way of understanding the differences between actual and predicted points using the square root of the quadratic means in each of the points. Uh, Traumfeli and Wohnungen indicated that this was actually a perfectly good metric from their standpoint. And one reason for that is that it relates to the targeted variable, a variable that we're looking to, to model. And in our case, we were trying to understand what drives the numbers of, of inquiries. And as a reminder, we are working with the number of 24, um, which also had a basis in the data. And the other point about root mean square error is that a smaller um, one is better. Uh, in understanding sort of what's going on. Um, we then ran more than five models, um, but we, I, we just wanted to present sort of what things look like. We started with regression models, a linear regression, a lasso regression. And for a variety of reasons, we thought um, an error of 32 um, or 34 was really um, not as good as we were hoping for. And we turned to a different kind of uh, model, tree models, either random forest or what we're calling light GBM. And um, we were much more satisfied with um, light GBM and random forest um, as their, their errors uh, were just over five. Um, we ended up then 
going into these models um, for a variety of reasons. Um, one is that they were all able to take factors that we expected to be significant, like price, the time that things were being offered, um, location, and relate them to um, inquiry. And the other reason we went with the, these particular models is they were all able to feed their results into an algorithm that would allow us to sort of identify what are the most important features among them. And so this chart is showing you um, a, the top 10 features in the model that we developed using um, light GBM. And it's showing um, that the time of the year, things like whether you can take your dog, whether the mean price of the of the property, um, really most significant, but you know whether the property was non-smoking or had the option of being non-smoking, whether it was this prior priority advertisement here is what uh, Tom Felly and Vonuen calls a top listing. So that was also, I think, interesting for us to see the longitude is a measure of location. And then there were a couple of things that sort of surprised us to say, oh, a vacuum cleaner or a medical kit. Um, <laughs> this could be like a really significant thing. One theory we developed is that these are things that um, may be really important to guests, but it's also maybe an indication that having a fully filled out profile is really important um, and that this maybe is being expressed here. This is a theory we haven't been able to really verify that 100%, but it's something that sort of came to our mind in other points as we were doing our analysis. Um, we also then sort of took some of these insights and then went back to the data and we decided to group the properties um, by this inquiry rate. And that um, we defined as the number of web views of a property in the data, this was called exposed views divided by um, the inquiry count per month. And what this chart is showing is we then grouped into three groups, what we call a low inquiry rate, a middle inquiry rate, and a high inquiry rate. And these were the low inquiry rate with the bottom 25% of our data. The middle 50 was in the, the middle and the top 25 was in the top, uh, in the, the high inquiry rate. And what we also found is there were some things that were fairly exclusively in um, the high uh, category. And this included priority advertising, having amenities like a dishwasher, being able to accommodate children, um, DVD player, um, uh, having sort of insect control, all these sorts of things were things that sort of came out of additional analysis here. And they're the sort of things that, I, that we're thinking that with more um, analysis, um, homeowners can actually be sort of given some insights into the, what they may want to have in their properties if they don't already. Um, and so to sort of sum things up, um, just to sort of come back to some of the things we mentioned, um, we thought that having a complete profile on the website would be um, very beneficial. The, one of the things that we noticed in the data was that a number of homeowners choose not to indicate a price or they, at least in the data we had. And this seemed to actually not be to their advantage. As was mentioned, um, high resolution photos are ubiquitous. It may not be um, a super positive to have them, but it would probably be very much a negative uh, not to have them. And that high performing properties tend to have strong ratings. Um, so this is something you know uh, to keep in mind and to think about. Um, our model and our tools pointed to price uh, in terms of things that the uh, homeowners can vary, price, the month of arrival, whether they're a top listing, whether they allow dogs, and whether they um, have their property be non-smoking is um, really important things. And then looking down the line, um, if we had had more time, we would have really wanted to spend more time sort of focusing out on particular markets. Um, it looked to us that the Baltic Sea, the North Sea, Upper Bavaria, um, I mean, Baltic Sea and North Sea are fairly similar, but Upper Bavaria is a very different um, kind of uh, area. And so to actually sort of go in to the specific regions and um, develop models there may be really productive. And then also um, to go into these properties that have actually a, a great um, attraction, but they're maybe not so numerous in, um, the Tom Ferry and Vonum um, portfolio. And part of what we thought was really interesting about them is that they were really um, active in the non-summer months. And we had understood that summer is when a lot of uh, the activity happens with uh, respect to Ferry and Vonum. Um, these may be really interested, interesting to look at and see, seeing what is it about 
their ability to draw people at other times of the year. Um, and then this may be, I mean, we sit outside your business, we don't presume to know, but it would seem to be maybe an area where it might uh, represent some area for growth. Um, and that's sort of what we wanted to say. I'm happy to entertain any questions you have. Thank you.